everybody. <laughs> We're back at the Lake Spear Railroad Museum visiting one of the most requested items in our collection. We've had a lot of calls and a lot of emails about this. One from the King as well. Do something on the 2500. This is the FP7 2500 built for the Sioux Line. Well, not quite. It was actually a demonstrator built by EMD to show off what an FP7 would look like and let different railroads try it out to see how it worked. It's kind of like going to a fancy car show and being able to take a test drive on the newest model on the floor. And that's what the Sioux Line did. And they liked it so much, they bought it. And they used it on their passenger trains from Minneapolis to Winnipeg and from Duluth down to Chicago on the Laker. The Laker was a train that left Duluth about 7.30 in the evening. You woke up the next morning at 8.15 in the windy city of Chicago. This has 1,500 horsepower. And they bought it with the F unit, the A unit you see here, and the FB units that went with it. And there were two of them. They used it on the Laker, as I said, which was the premier run between Duluth and Chicago. Here's a look at that Laker on its last and final day, the 15th of January, 1965, parked in Superior on its way to Duluth. Come on in, I'll show you around. Passenger service ended, as I said, in 1965 on the Sioux Line. So they took their passenger locomotives, like the F7P, and turned it into freight service. They abandoned the pine tree livery, which it had been originally painted in, and went with that Sioux Line red and white. In 1980, it was reconfigured to provide power for snowplows. And all they really used it for was to provide electricity and air to this train. In 1986, this unit was donated to the Lake Superior Railroad Museum, and that began a nine-year restoration that returned the engine to working order, where we use it today on our North Shore Scenic Railroad. This is not only a working locomotive on the North Shore Scenic Railroad, it's also one of the Lake Spear Railroad Museum's best ambassadors. We have sent this engine all the way to Spencer, North Carolina for a F unit rendezvous. It's been down to the Twin Cities at the St. Paul Union Depot. And here's a picture of it over at Osceola. And you can see it's on the Osceola Railway, operated by MTM. It's a great ambassador because of its history and because of its wonderful paint scheme. Let's take a ride. Here we are in the cab of the engine pulling a North Shore Scenic Railroad train crossing Railroad Street in downtown Duluth. Out on the North Shore Scenic Railroad, some of the most scenic spots and the FP7 2500 looks great in all of them. Back in the cab of the 2500, here's a rundown of the controls. You have your throttle, obviously. You have your engine brake, your train brake, this is kind of interesting. The bell is just this little switch here to turn the air on and off to the bell, and of course the air to the horn here. This is kind of neat. It's a gyro light, and it's on the front of the locomotive, and when you turn it on, it not only turns on the light, but it also swivels the light and moves it around and up and down and around in a figure eight circle. And the reason for that was, they thought it was better and safer. Instead of having a light come at you, if this gyrating light came, it might attract more attention and warn you that the train is on its way to you. Not only passengers like you and I would ride behind this engine, but sitting right here in this cab on July 10th in 1950, this engine pulled royalty, the former King of England, Edward VII. You remember him. He was that bad boy who married Wallace Simpson and had a choice, either marry the love of his life or abdicate the throne, which he did after one month in office. After he was coronated, he said he wanted to get married, and the pushback at the time, marry a divorcee, well, he abdicated the throne. He also was kind of on the wrong side of the early days of the Hitler administration, but that's a whole nother story. Here you see the happy couple on vacation with Hitler himself in Berdisgarten. 
Well, the engine is now in the control of the Lake Superior Railroad Museum. We've got lots of people that want to see inside of it, so they have. We thank you for watching with us today as well. Keep in mind, we've got a new one of these coming out each and every day. Maybe tomorrow we'll take a look at something that you want to see. Send us those cards and letters. Keep them coming. And as always, make sure you wash your hands, cover your face when you cough, don't touch your face afterwards, and please do what everybody should do. Let's take care of each other.